Hello and welcome. I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about bone and the formation of bone and how important bone is to local analgesia. Now, believe it or not, bone is a highly dynamic tissue. Bone continues to modify and change throughout life. And I've heard it said that an adult has its total skeleton replaced every five years. So please, we spend a lot of our time looking at bones in the lab and uh, you know bones on benches and things, and we think of them as hard, immutable, unchangeable things. But bone is really a very dynamic tissue, a living tissue, and in fact, when you get the opportunity to cut into bone in a living person, you'll find that bone bleeds and is, is a highly dynamic living cellular tissue. But to local analgesia, the giving of local analgesia for dentistry, the key issues around bone is its density. And it's a pretty basic uh, a fairly basic fact if you're trying to get a solution let's let's just draw some liquid here if you're trying to get this liquid here to diffuse to something over here that diffusion the rate of it or the actual opportunity for it to, to diffuse is dependent upon what is in between. So what is in this region here will determine if this solution will diffuse towards its target. And let's imagine this target is a nerve. And that's what we're trying with local anesthesia to do, is we're trying to get the local anesthetic solution. So we're trying to get the local anesthetic solution to diffuse until it hits the nerve over here. And it is dependent upon the distance, obviously, but it's also dependent upon what this tissue here is made of. And if we make this tissue out of a thick, highly dense, rigid material, we can actually stop this diffusion from happening. So this liquid will diffuse up to here, but go no further. And that means that the local anaesthetic solution will not get to the nerve. So I think you've probably worked out what we're talking about here, is depending upon the bone that may be surrounding the nerves, it may change the opportunity for the local anaesthetic solution to get to those nerves. So let's have a look at a little piece of bone, a cross-section of bone. Here we have it here. Now, before you get caught out, this is a little piece of metal here that's used to hold this to the other piece of bone, so don't worry about that, that's sort of just artefact. But what I want you to look at carefully is the two types of bone you can see. There's this bone here, and separately, and looking quite different, is this bone here in the middle of this section of tissue. That bone there. And then if we look on the other surface over here, we've got this same sort of looking stuff as the other side here. What we're looking at here is the two types of bone that there is in, in, in the human body. There is compact bone and there is what we call spongy bone. You may hear it called all sorts of things, I call it spongy bone. And then obviously on the outside, on this side here, we have compact bone again. And if you look at these, these are all living bone. So all of these will have cells in them, keeping the tissue alive. But the difference is in the amount of mineral content. This compact bone here and here has a far higher mineral content and is far denser. And in fact, 
this bone can become so dense that if you put a local anaesthetic solution on this side of it out here and you expected it let's imagine let's just for the sake of this argument imagine that there is your nerve that you want to affect sitting right here in the middle of this tissue here let's imagine that if you put this local anaesthetic solution on the outside of this bone and expected it to diffuse through to get to the nerve here well it's not going to be able to it is going to be blocked by this very dense cortical bone and as I said to you before bone is a very dynamic tissue it is dependent upon all sorts of factors about how dense a bone is now we know some common features about bone so we can talk about bone in general in a minute and we'll look at some other pictures and talk about that but also you've got to remember it differs between individuals so when a patient comes into your surgery and you're going to need to give them local anaesthetic the first thing I do is actually look at the patient and have a think about what is the density of bone on this in, in this individual are they a large substantial male with very heavy bones that looks extremely dense or are they a 90 year old frail great grandma with very delicate looking bones the ability of local anesthetic to diffuse is dependent upon this bone density so this is how we get the differential effect of how local anesthetic diffuses through bone because we have these two types of bone compact bone and spongy bone so now let's have a look at a skull and think about the different densities of bones in different areas so here we have a skull and let's think about the differential bone density on this skull the first thing I want you to notice is the ramus of the mandible this area here and this body area of the mandible and in fact um, while we're looking at this you might want to even think about your own mandible and have a feel of the density of the bone on the mandible this bone here has very thick dense compact bone and that bone is extremely dense and uh, gives the mandible its strength and rigidity in fact you might know about this because to, to actually fracture a lower jaw takes a great deal of force and the fracture often happens in areas of weakness you don't normally get fractures through complete whole bodies of mandible they're pretty rare or completely through uh, ramuses of mandibles because of the compact dense nature of this, bo this bone so what does that mean well for us remember that we have embedded in this bone from the mandibular foramen running along inside the bone here a little part of it comes out through there but most of it runs through the bone here the nerve that's going to supply all of the teeth so if this bone is very dense in this region we can't put the local anesthetic solution next to the bone here and ever expect that it will get to that nerve and this is why we have the difference between giving local anesthetic in the lower jaw and the upper jaw you can't expect the solution to be able to make its way through this dense compact bone however on the other side of the coin if you look at the bone covering the roots of the upper teeth here or across the front here and in fact the area across the front of your lower incisors as well here in fact if you get your finger now and rub it rub your lip you can actually feel the roots of your teeth through this bone 
it has very little compact bone and a lot more uh, thin compact bone and uh, more of the spongy bone. So therefore, the rules of giving local anaesthetic are completely different in these regions. If you put the solution on the bony surface adjacent to the teeth you want it to work, the solution is going to be able to make its way through that bone and be able to actually affect the nerves and remember the nerves for these upper teeth are on the other side of this bone they're down in here they're coming out to supply these teeth like that remember the anterior middle and posterior superior alveolar nerves remember the posterior comes from around the back here and it's going to go in and supply these molar teeth like that so we can place the solution adjacent to the bone and because this bone is thin we will be able to the solution will be able to diffuse through the bone and uh, take its effect now there's a couple of other little variations here remember down here we talked about this foramen here this little tiny foramen here called the mental foramen and there are a number of things there firstly the nerve that comes out through there is called the mental nerve let's just write mental to remind us here and that mental nerve comes out and supplies the lip and all of that region there but that little foramen there provides an access hole it's like a little manhole cover if you put the solution in here around that foramen it will can diffuse in through the bone and affect the nerve buried within this compact bone so don't forget about the mental foramen as a little opening or a manhole cover in this compact bone and clearly to complete the story just to rem remind you remember that is not going to work you can also the first place in the mandible region where you can actually get at the nerve when it comes the inferior alveolar nerve when it comes out through the mandibular foramen is just around that mandibular foramen just as the as the inferior alveolar nerve is going to exit through that foramen now remember I am drawing this on the outside of the mandible but all of this is happening on the medial surface this is from the medial surface so we're doing it through x-ray view at the moment so this is happening on the medial surface so don't be confused you can't feel the mandibular foramen on the outside of the ramus of the mandible it's on the medial surface so just don't be confused I'm drawing it by x-ray vision here so this is why the difference between the two types of bone is so important in the decision-making about giving local anaesthetic. Thank you.